What's up you guys Aditi welcome back to our channel today we are going to talk about learning like this is like the third learning video i'm making i've already made classical conditioning and operant conditioning like part 1 of operant conditioning today we will see the third type of learning theory which is cognitive learning theory so let's go learning was always considered as a behaviorist theory and The original focus of John D Watson or B F Skinner was on observable behavior. What was going on in a person's mind, like animal or a person's mind when they were learning was never actually considered. Like they did not even think to consider it, to question it because it was it's it's not possible right like what is going on in a person's head you cannot measure it you cannot observe it and hence it was of no interest to the behaviorists but in the 1950s and also in the 1960s many psychologists became aware that cognition that is mental events cannot be ignored like we have to know like what is going on in a person's mind when they are learning so the early cognitive learning scientist was edward tolman edward tolman is best known for this one experiment that he created with three groups of rats and a maze so his experiment was about Uh, having three groups of rats and he was going to teach these three groups of rats this one maze at one time in the first group the rats were given a reinforcement every time they completed the maze they exited the maze and they were given the reinforcement and then they were put back in the maze they completed the maze or exited the maze they were given a reinforcement and that was like continued for a while till they could exit the maze without any errors The second group of rats were done this exact same thing except the fact that they were not given a reinforcement every single time they exited the maze. So they were put in the maze, they exited the maze, they were put back in the maze, they exited the maze, they were put back in the maze. So this went on till for 9 days. On the 10th day when they exited the maze, they were given a reinforcement. And then there's a third group of rats that were given no reinforcement. Every time they exited the maze, they were put back in the maze. So this group is actually the control group. Now, a person who is a follower of Skinner or is a believer of operant conditioning, these people will say that the first group of rats will be the ones who will learn the maze after a number of trials, and that's what it seemed to be in the beginning. It seemed like the first group of rats were the ones who learned the maze after a number of trials and the second and third group kind of wandered around in the maze aim aimlessly until just accidentally exiting the maze but on the 10th day the second group of rats were receiving the reinforcement and something changed so ever since they started receiving the reinforcement the second group of rats should have taken as long as the first group of rats did to find their way out of the maze but actually the second they started receiving the reinforcement they almost immediately started to solve the maze so tolman concluded that when the second group of rats were not given any reinforcement for the first 9 days in these 9 days they used to just wander aimlessly in the maze and they had actually learned the blind alleys and the right paths and the turns that they should take to exit the maze but they had not demonstrated this learning until the 10th day when they started receiving the reinforcement because they did not have a reason to demonstrate this learning so this learning had actually stayed hidden or latent and hence tolman actually calls this kind of learning as latent learning now coming to the second type of cognitive learning theory martin seligman he is now famous because he is the founder of the field positive psychology so he and his colleagues were actually doing this experiment on dogs using classical conditioning and then and that's when they actually stumbled upon this cognitive learning theory So in this experiment the dogs were placed in a two sided box there was a speaker and also there were metal rods on the floor so that the dogs could be given a harmless yet a little painful electric shock so the experiment was about um, the dogs would be harnessed and they would present them with a tone and then they would be given electric shock and because these dogs were harnessed they would not be able to escape so the experimenters were trying to 
classically condition them you know the classical conditioning case about a little albert experiment is kind of like the same thing where these dogs would try would learn to be afraid of the tone and they would try to escape that from being shocked the second they heard the tone but as we know that that did not happen so later what they did was that they took the same dogs that had learned this thing and they were unharnessed and they were put with other dogs in the same two sided box so when these two dogs were presented with the tone and then they were given this electric shock the dogs that were not conditioned actually jumped and tried to escape from that shock but the dogs that were now unharnessed and who were conditioned to fear the tone they did not jump they did not move at all like you can actually see that they were distressed but they did not move so the dogs that were harnessed earlier and were conditioned to fear the tone they had apparently learned in the original tone and shock situation that they cannot escape from being shocked they had learned that they will not be able to get away from this shock so even when they were put in the exact same or very similar situation they did not even try to escape because they had started believing that even if they tried they cannot escape so they just did not try seligman called this theory as learned helplessness learned helplessness is a tendency to fail to act to escape from a situation because of a history of repeated failures in the past seligman proposed that depressive behavior is a form of learned helplessness he believes that people who are depressed they may have learned in the past that whatever they do they cannot control what happens to them so if we have to apply this learned helplessness to our general situations then um Let's take my example of how horrible my maths is. So in school, in, I have taken statistics right now, but still, like in school, I was so afraid of maths, and I never actually tried to get better at it. I never actually solved more sums or took effort to understand maths because I had believed that whatever I do, I will never understand it. Whatever I do, I will never be able to score more in maths. so whatever i do i will never be good at math so what is the point of even trying what is the point of taking that effort this is just an example of how i was in the past i have taken statistics right now and i have to do maths in it so i really try to solve sums and understand how to solve them and all of that so what i'm trying to say is that i have changed my learned helplessness behavior and it can be changed if you put your mind to it now let's talk about the third type of cognitive learning theory which is given to us by Wolfgang Kohler so he was a gestalt psychologist and he used to give these puzzles or problems to one of his chimpanzees named sultan you'll find videos of sultan on youtube and i will leave the links of it in the description box so go check it out i'm not going to show it here for copyright reasons i don't know if they'll get copyrighted or something so i don't want this video to be deleted by youtube so just remember to go and check out those links in the description box in one of his experiments collar had kept a banana just outside the cage where sultan was in and he had kept it quite close to the cage so sultan had to just put his hand out and just grab it, it was very easy second time what he did was that he kept it a little out of his reach and there was one stick in sultan's cage so sultan could use that stick and just like rake the banana close to him and then he picked it up so what we need to know here is that chimpanzees are natural tool users like our ancestors the apes and hence this behavior of sultan is not surprising at all and so the problem was made a little difficult where there were two sticks that were kept in his cage and the banana was made and was kept a little further away now so sultan pushed one of the sticks out of the cage as far as it could go and as close to the banana as it could go and then with the second stick he tried to like pull it back but that did not work and that's when he had this sudden click in his mind because he started jumping with joy and excitement so when he was given that that stick back he kind of put them together so 
he realized that one stick was hollow and you could actually put the second stick in it and kind of like make it into a longer stick and that's when he like raked the banana towards him and Collar called this thing as insight learning. He believed that insight learning is not something that you can learn through trial and error alone. Insight learning needs all the elements coming together in a kind of a aha moment. There is also another video of Sultan or maybe some other monkey where uh, bananas are kind of tied by tied by a thread and they are like dangling from the ceiling and there are a lot of boxes and a lot of things uh, that are kept in this big cage. So the monkeys or chimps they tried jumping and trying to catch it. They put one box and one just like got on top of the box and tried to catch it. So what they finally did was that they like kind of stacked the boxes on top of each other and one chimp climbed on top and then he got the banana so that is another um, example of inside learning I've, as i said i'll key, leave the links of both these videos in the description box i guess that is it for today's video there is a fourth type of learning theory called as observation learning but i'll make a separate video on that Till then, if you have learned something from this video, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what other videos you want me to do and subscribe to this channel. Join the community, hit the bell notification so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. I'll see you next Friday with another psychology video.